In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my top five SUVs on sale today in 2022. And each one of these has a specific reason for being on this list. So let's jump straight into it and start with number one. That is the Mercedes GLE. I've talked about this car before. I think it's a fantastic design by Mercedes. And the reason for being on this list is because of the plantedness of this car. So what we're gonna do, have a look at the side, front and rear, and also the interior of all these cars, these five SUVs. So the reason why I think Mercedes GLE is one of the best looking SUVs on the market today is because there is no other SUV that looks as planted as the Mercedes GLE. And it also has this beautiful line flow, as you can see right here, lines stretching all the way from the front end to the rear and connecting the entire car. As I've said before, Mercedes currently has some of the best looking wheel designs in the business. But this is the view where you can really see the plantedness of this design. Just have a look at this, how wide the shoulder is. And then it has an additional fender sticking out, creating this beefy, solid unit look of this uh, GLE. It almost looks like a military vehicle, in my opinion, with these graphics going down like this. It doesn't have this Mercedes elegance to it, but instead it feels more utilitarian in its design, a very simple design as well. And looking at it from a front view right here, we do have a grille that is a little bit inverted here, as you can see. It's not the traditional grille that we have going like this. Instead, it it's cuts right here in the middle. So you have two different variations of this grille. We have an upside grille in the top half, and then it kind of changes direction in the center of the grille right here. As you can see, it goes down, creating a bit of a static design, but I think it suits this overall package and these dimensions of the uh, GLE. Clear distinct designs in the headlights as well as you can see we have the two bars for the E-Class creating a nice identity for the GLE even at night. Looking at the interior, this is a gorgeous looking interior in my opinion. We do have two screens as you can see, but they're not just stuck on top or glued on top of the dash like we see a lot of other manufacturers doing here. This is nicely integrated in the entire framing of these two. And you can see that it also stretches out and creates these air vents on the side. You can see this pattern that we have in the air vents on the sides of the screen is also coming back in these air vents right here. It's still a very utilitarian design because these look exactly the same, just four vents right next to each other, which brings in more of that military style. It has that utilitarian feel that I want to have in an SUV. Moving on to number two on the list is the Cayenne Turbo GT. And I never thought that I would have a coupe SUV on this list, but I just had to put this in here for the reason of being, if the Mercedes GLE is, uh, was on the list for, the, for its plantedness, this is here for its performance and heritage. The thing with this car, there isn't a single SUV coupe that I think looks good except for this right here. And the reason being is the heritage of Porsche. This, the coupe version of the Cayenne looks more natural in my opinion than the normal SUV of the Cayenne. And that is because we're used to seeing this sloping roof line on as a clear DNA for Porsche, and it applies well even if, when you have it on the SUV. And then you have these big 22 inch wheels for this turbo GT version. Looking at it in the back, it doesn't look, even though it is a turbo GT, I don't think this looks as planted as the GLE, but it's still a beefy machine. We have this light bar in the middle creating a nice connection and adding width to the rear end. Very simplistic bumper and also a simple diffuser in the rear end with the bazooka tailpipes centered in the middle of the car, which I think is unique and sets the uh, Cayenne Turbo GT apart from other SUVs. Looking at it from a fr front view, clear Porsche design in the front end. And this is what I talked about when I talked about the Cayenne or Porsche in a, in a previous video is that I think they really nailed down the, the uniqueness of the Cayenne and does, they, they don't try to make it look like a 911 anymore like they did with the early generations. Still a very simple graphics and framing of the intakes in the front end. You have two LED bars in the front here as you can see and these four LEDs in the front of the headlights as well which is 
typical for Porsche these days, creating a unique identity in the front end as well. Looking at the interior, this is a definitely a sports car interior. We have the center line for the wheels. We have a big tachometer in the center of the dash. And I love the integration of this display in this case of the Porsche Cayenne. We have a nice framing of the uh, infotainment screen here as well with the intakes kind of following the same framing going into the lower part and creating a base for this uh, display. You also have a stopwatch right here in the center emphasizing the sportiness of this design even more. I think it's a gorgeous interior, sporty, more sporty obviously than luxury. Moving on to number three, this is the Volvo XC40. The reason I put this on the list is because the GLE was plantedness, the Cayenne was sportiness, this is Scandinavian clean, almost product design. It has some very nice chamfers in this design. I really love what Volvo did or do right now with their design. Very clean, almost clinical design, Polestar-like, but still retaining a nice line flow in this design, as you can see. And we also have these two shelves of lines in the front, coming back in the rear end as well, which is then wrapped around or framed by the taillight. I also like that we have a two-tone design here. The black, the, the black roof creates a lighter feel with this design the same thing in the in the lower part of the design we have this black trim adding visual lightness to this design and of course what I think Volvo does really well is not just the design and the, and the Scandinavian product design approach to their cars creating a nice identity for it you also have very strong identity in the graphic features for example the taillights right here and of course the Tor Thor's hammer in the front headlights very nice design and I really like the black and white because it creates a very stark contrast between the two-tone the black greenhouse and then the rest of the body being white looking at the interior we have the same kind of approach that we have in the exterior bringing that sim simplicity into the uh, interior with some very nice material that looks like it belongs in more expensive model than the XC40 purposeful framing of the uh, gauge cluster right here it's all digital but it is framed and it has this nice house to it and is not connected to the infotainment screen here as you can see but the framing of this entire package with these gorgeous air vents that you have on the side of the infotainment sc screen these has a very nice solid feel to them and it feels quality when you touch the materials inside of any Volvo these days number four on the list is the Genesis GV70 this part looks like a Porsche 928 to me so this could this would be a very cool Porsche Macan design with this treatment of the C pillar it definitely feels like a Porsche and something that I wanted to see would want to see in a Macan design but what the reason I put the Genesis GV70 on this list is because of Genesis current design language and super strong design DNA we have some super nice clean line flow in the body of this car as you can see we have this lower part going into the bumper we have this very sharp line in the shoulder line coming back creating an, an additional muscle line in the over the rear wheels the thing with the Genesis though is that they implemented the line flow in the graphics as well so as you can see we have this line in the front headlights going into the tail lights all the way across and creating these two lines in the rear and these two lines for the headlights in the front it's a beautiful connection of not just the line flow in the car but also the graphic features of the car and I do like the rear view however I don't really like these parts lower part of the bumper I think this is too complicated for this design I would like to have maybe maybe this black graphic going all the way down here removing this body colored piece or even lower it a little bit and intrude too far on the height of the overall shape of the rear end but these taillights some of my favorite taillights at the moment I think they're doing a fantastic job with their graphics people talk about the uh, BMWs as having large grills but just have a look at the Genesis designs. They have massive grills across the entire lineup. This, the GV70 grill, is actually one of the smaller grills 
Another detail that I love is the implementation of this logo in the front end. It looks like a surfboard or a board that just slid across the water, which is the hood, and created these lines going after it as a wake in that uh, water surface. It's a really cool integration and it looks elegant and beautiful at the same time. And here you can see just how sharp this shoulder line is. It's almost like a cut with a sword into the body creating this line. Looking at the interior of the GV80, this is an interesting interior because I, I don't think I've... So it looks almost like an 80s design to me, but I do like the way it's integrated here. It's a very unique design approach to interior design with this oval that has all the functions that you need and then we have this screen in the middle very wide screen in addition to the infotainment system right here which is housed by this nice curvature so the fluidity of the exterior stretches into the interior as well this i would say is almost more simplistic than the volvo xc40 but in a different way there is a lot of ellipses going on in this design even the steering wheel has an ellipse to it and you have the air vents being almost hidden in this line and cuts right into the center part of the dash. Very beautiful and unique approach to an interior design. Last but not least, I had to put in the Ford Bronco as number five on this list. And the reason being, the GLE was planted, the Cayenne Turbo was performance, the XC40 was Scandinavian product design, the GV70 was design DNA, and the Ford Bronco is here on this list for its utility and just being a proper off-road SUV with this gorgeous retro styling that I've talked so much about in uh, here on this channel and on the sketch monkey i just love this design in my opinion this is tied with the dodge challenger when it comes to bringing back an old design in a modern format this is one of the best retro inspired designs i've ever seen and i think this is going to sell well for a very long time i mean just look at the challenger still outsells the Mustang and the Camaro and it's been essentially the same design since I think 2007. This is a 2022 model. This green specifically is called Eruption Green. I just love the name of the color. I think it suits the Bronco very well. It looks super clean and like it belongs in the wilderness with this color. One detail that I really love about the Bronco is this shoulder line because you can see that it has it goes in so it doesn't go out or it's not just a shoulder sharp line but it has this indent in the body and that is something that we saw a lot in the 70s and the 80s but we don't see a lot these days so that's one of these details that definitely brings this styling back three or four decades when you look at details like that this is equipped with the Sasquatch package and that means that we have 35 inch tires and these wide fenders as well which I think is almost a must if you're going for a Bronco looking at the interior very simplistic interior here as well and this is what I like I want to have a big screen in the middle a, a nice house for the infotainment system like we have here I don't really Really mind that it's all digital as long as it's separated from the center screen and have this cap above it so we don't get glare from the Sun that is super important when you have screens these days if you have a screen that is too exposed to the window it's gonna mess up with the visibility and the in the and the sharpness of the screen because you have too much glare so I love that they did that with the new Bronco you also have additional buttons up here and a very simple traditional looking center stack for the climate control for example it's just just a nice simple approach to the interior design I do love this chamfer that we have here this this big surface it says Bronco right here then it goes out a little bit like this and it creates this fit this surface that I just want to touch and feel and feel the, the the sculpture of this specific part of the interior emphasizing more that this is meant to go off-road you also have some handles here for when you go wild on the trails and your passengers need something to hold on to. Those are my five best designed SUVs on the market today. Let me know if I missed one or which one of these would be your favorite if you were in the market to buy one of these today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.